Hey guys, so today we're back with another video and we're going to take a look at the Mopar limited edition vehicles. These began in 2010 with the Challenger and they have been released annually ever since. So today's part one, looking at the first three vehicles. And then part two will come out later and we'll look at the rest of them. Of course, they have been released every year since 2010, just one different vehicle. So before we start, we need to briefly look at what Mopar actually is. The term was first used by Chrysler in the 1920s, created by a committee to use on cans of Chrysler Motor Parts Antifreeze. By 1937, Chrysler began using it as a brand, and the name Mopar is actually a blend of the words motor and parts. The term now refers to Mopar parts, which are the OEM parts for FCA vehicles, but it can also be used as an overarching umbrella term to describe pretty much any Chrysler vehicle, from Dodge to Ram to Jeep. So going back to the limited edition vehicles, these all feature custom paint and have many Mopar performance and cosmetic modifications that separate them from the regular vehicles, and they were produced in very limited quantities. So let's begin. The Mopar 10 Challenger was based on the 2010 Challenger RT, and of course this was the first special edition Mopar vehicle. There were just 500 built for the US and then another 100 for Canada. The price tag was $38,000 for an automatic and $39,000 for a manual transmission, US dollars of course. So that meant at the time, the Mopar 10 was sandwiched between the RT, which was down at $31,610, and also below the SRT8, which was $43,680. Chrysler executives felt that the package you were getting was justifying the increased price. The only exterior color available is brilliant black crystal pearl coat, and the interior was black as well. Not every car looked the same, as you did have a few options for the accent colors on the side stripes on the side of the car, as well as the stitching on the steering and seats. Your choices there were Mopar Blue, Red, or Silver. As you can see by the chart out of the US Mopar 10s, Blue was the most popular, followed by Silver, and then Red. The Mopar graphics were everywhere, with a badge on the front fascia, on the hood pin caps, rear windows, and chrome fuel door. The black outlook continues with a black chrome grille and 20-inch forged heritage gloss black wheels that are taken from the RT Classic. The Mopar 10 does have a really sinister look with a TA style hood that has functional vents and some vintage hood pins on either side. As for the interior, there are beautiful catskin leather seats with Mopar 10 labeling and stitching and those match the car's exterior side stripe that I mentioned. Mopar added a leather wrap steering wheel and a specific shifter depending on the transmission. So a T-handle shifter if you have an automatic and a pistol grip shifter for the manuals. On the passenger side you can find the serialized dash plaque with your production number on it. Other goodies that do come with your Mopar 10 include a special owner's kit with a certificate of your VIN, the date of build, the build number, Mopar 10 car cover, a special edition book, and a limited edition sketch of the vehicle signed by the chief designer. As for the performance, you do have your base 5.7 liter V8 Hemi found, as in all the RT models. Added to this was a unique engine cover with blue writing, a Mopar cold air intake, and of course that TA hood scoop that pushed some more fresh air into the intake. Dodge claimed the combination would add 10 to 15 horsepower to the stock Hemi, so the stock Hemi was rated for 370 horsepower and 395 pound-feet of torque for the auto. There were the two options for the transmission, a 5-speed automatic or a 6-speed manual, and 64% of the American buyers did choose the automatic over the manual. If we look at the manual performance times, 0-60 to 60 is roughly 5 seconds flat, and the quarter mile takes 13.5 seconds. Other additions include front and rear Mopar strut tower braces to improve the cornering, and the Super Track Pack suspension, which added bigger sway bars, stiffer bushings, and firmer springs and shocks. Overall, the Mopar 10 is an awesome package. I believe Mopar intentionally chose not to use their top-of-the-line SRT8 for the package, and offered RT buyers something that very few others could get a chance to own, and thus increasing the appeal for it. Fast forward over 10 years ahead, and there are challengers everywhere, but you probably haven't seen a Mopar 10 version around, or in person, because they have just become so rare and today low mileage ones are listed for above $30,000. Twenty eleven saw the second release, the Mopar 11 Challenger. Mopar built just 1,000 of these, with 900 going to the US and 100 for Canada. The MSRP was $39,750 at the time, a whopping $5,000 more than a regular SRT with the Super Track Pack. Every Mopar 11 owner did also get a personalized kit with a brochure that told you about the special features, a certificate with the VIN, and information on your specific build and serial number of your car. Again, the only color it came in was pitch black, and this time around, Mopar decided to go with an offset E-Rally type of stripe, running from bumper to bumper in Mopar Blue, 
and the Dodge emblem in the grille is replaced with a Mopar one. Wheels are 20 inch 5 spoke Envy rims in the same pitch black color as the body, wrapped in Goodyear F1 supercar 245-45 ZR20 tires, and there's also a black spoiler as well. The Mopar Blue theme continues inside with Mopar Blue stitching on the leather seats and steering wheel. Seats are again catskin custom leather black, and they have a Mopar stripe on the driver's seat and the rear seat on that side, so the stripe on the outside is literally matched in the inside which is very cool. Some new features include a different key fob, carbon fiber Mopar retro pistol grip shifter, Mopar bright polished pedal covers, brushed silver sill plates, and Mopar floor mats. Again, to make sure you and the passenger know you've got a Mopar 11, there is a limited edition plaque on the passenger side with your serial number. Again, Dodge added some other improvements to performance too, but nothing really substantial. There's still the same 5.7 Hemi as found in the RT, with the 5-speed automatic only. The Super Track Pack was an option for the RT, but it does come standard here, so that adds a bunch of things that help the performance, like a 3-mode traction control system, performance-tuned steering, sport suspension, and heavy-duty brakes. The Mopar 11 has a unique final drive ratio of 3.92 to 1, a big improvement over the 3.06 of the regular Super Track Pack on the RT. And just like the Challenger, Mopar has added bigger stabilizer bars in the front and back, along with front and rear strut tower braces for improved handling. Mopar says this model is a few tenths of a second faster than an RT, so 0-60 would go down from 5.2 seconds to 5.0, and the quarter mile drops from 13.7 to 13.5. And onto the third vehicle of today's video, the Mopar 12 was a 2012 only special edition model that marked Mopar's 75th anniversary, and this one obviously was based on the Chrysler 300. The price was $49,700, so a $10,000 increase over a 2012 300C, and even $705 more than the 300 SRT8, so that was an interesting pricing choice by Chrysler. This one continues with the same black and blue theme as the first two. Again, they're super rare, since only 500 of these editions were made based off of the Chrysler 300S. So it got gloss black paint with the Mopar blue stripes along the side of the body this time, and going up the hood, and there's also a stripe that wraps around the wheel. The whole car is blacked out with black headlight accents, black paint, and a blacked out grille. There's also 20 by 8 inch gloss black Mopar wheels. And other nice features include a Mopar 75 fender badge, and a Mopar design deck lid badge. The interior also has some blue accents on the perforated leather sport bucket seats, and these seats do look very similar to the ones found on the Challenger 10 with the blue inserts and stitching. Piano black trim pieces are found on the doors, instrument panel, and steering wheel, and there's a special Mopar shifter. You also get paddle shifters, Mopar sill plates, and a Mopar 12 limited edition badge that is serial numbered on the passenger side just like the previous two models. The engine is the same 5.7 Hemi that we've been over once again, but in the 300, the power rating is 363 horsepower and 394 pound-feet of torque, again with a 5-speed automatic only. So we can see that there's no changes power-wise at all, even with the increased price tag. There is some performance improvement, as the diff ratio changes to 3.92 to 1, and Mopar claims the car can go 0 to 60 in the low 5-second range. The suspension gets 42% stiffer in the front, and 23% stiffer in the rear over a regular 300 Touring model. Each of those 500 buyers also got a personalized owner's box with a certificate of the car's VIN, the exact day the car was manufactured, Mopar key fobs and swag, and a rare concept sketch of the 300 signed by the designer. So that's the end of the video guys, what do you think of the Mopar editions? Again this is part 1 from 2010 to 2012, so I can do more of these for the other years if you guys are interested. Are you one of the lucky 2100 people who own one of these vehicles? Let me know down in the comment section below. I think this is a great strategy from Chrysler to create more limited edition and desirable vehicles that use the various OEM Mopar parts. And remember, most of these customizations of the vehicles are parts that could be purchased from any dealership. So it's nothing really special, but Mopar puts it together in a very nice package. And of course, because they produce so few of these cars, they do hold their value very well and most of them are preserved very well by the owners. Anyways, thanks for watching, make sure to like and subscribe for all your Mopar content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.